Anyway, enough about Zelensky's jumper. Tell us a little bit about the alarming increase of buy now, pay later loans. For people that don't know what that is, can you share a little bit about that? Yeah, uh, well, actually, you know, um, I'm trying to bring up my the report I, I just did on this guy, but I don't know how to load it here in, the, in, the, in this new system. Um, uh, so I'm, let me give me a second to bring up the uh, my... Well, while, while you're doing that, I'll just... Uh, I'll, I'll bring the audience into buy now, pay later. That is something that is absolutely massive here in Australia, and it has seen explosive growth over the last couple of years. And, you know, another way to call buy now, pay later are micro loans. They're micro loans that people really give to themselves, and it's just a different form of credit that's actually out there. So there's a couple of different companies here in Australia that um, really dominate the market. The first one is called Afterpay, and the other one is it's it's um, you know redheaded stepchild called ZipPay. And I think there's three or four other ones that are out there as well. But Afterpay is the 400 pound gorilla. That's the absolute juggernaut here in Australia. And every virtually every store that you see um, in Australia in a retail outlet has the ability for Afterpay or ZipPay. And I, I see the stickers on the windows there. And I remember when they first came out, I saw that and I remember thinking, it's just a modern day form of lay-by. And, but the, all they did, it was recreate the way that lay-by actually worked. Did you, you had lay-by in America, didn't you? For, for sure. I don't, must... I don't sound familiar. Lay-by doesn't sound familiar. Oh, I remember oh, that, so. Like layaway. What, what do you call it? You got layaway. So back in the day, tell me if it's the same thing. Back in the day, you would go into an outlet like um, Target or Kmart. You know, that's our version of, you know, the old school stores. And you'd pick up what you want and you'd take it to the back counter. And that would then, so you'd give it to them and then you'd lay by it and you'd pay X amount of dollars per week until you paid the thing off. And if you didn't pay it off, they held on to the stock. Uh, but what, what it meant was the store would have to hold on to the stock and manage the logistics of it all. So all the buy now, pay later loans did, after pay did, was reinvent the way that lay by worked. They would finance the act, they'd front the consumer. So the store then actually got paid and then they didn't have to handle the logistics of the actual stock as well. Right. It's, a, it's a genius business model. It's a really, really great business model and it helped retail here in Australia no end. In fact, I have after pay as um, a supplier of photography services here in Australia because we've had a couple of questions when, when, whenever we sell a wedding package, it, the price of it varies from two grand to about four grand. And sometimes people say, oh, do you have afterpay for that? Um, and we say, well, look, you know, we have, we have afterpay or we, we can just split the payment for you, which makes it easy for them and it stops all the interest and all of that stuff. So I kind of circumvent that. But if I was doing something that was high volume, like on a daily basis, I'm not selling weddings every day, of course, but if I'm selling something high volume, then I definitely don't want to be splitting the payments and managing logistics or something like that. Just let Afterpay or ZipPay take care of it. And it's super easy for me as a retailer to actually get that signed up. And it's plugged into the FPOS machine that I've actually got. So when people come into the studio, they can tap their card, they can use all of that. So it's a very, very efficient system. And you know, the, the people that created that got scale here in Australia really quickly and they rolled it out really quickly. It was one of those massive Australian success stories. But man, the other side of that is is pretty nasty. I can see that you've got your, your video lined up there. I'll jump out of the stream there and I'll let you sure. take over, mate. I think I have to figure it out. If I have to, I'll just do it. I don't know how to start this video. Any idea? The increased use of buy now, pay later loans this is a real indication of what's going on uh, in the economy and it's very worrisome. Let's talk about it. Okay, so what I try to do is I try to look for little clues, little signs out there, little signposts that tell us about the true health of the markets and people's finances. And in the spirit of that, I found one indication that's very worrisome and I want you to be aware of it. And in the description below, can you let us know whether you have been using buy now, pay later loans. Let's start with a quick little video that helps explain what's going on with these BNPL loans. Buy now, pay later isn't just financing Gen Z's online shopping habits. It's helping families put food on the table. U.S. consumers are increasingly using the installment loans to pay for everyday items, including groceries. 
That's highlighting the financial pain brought from the worst inflation outbreak in four decades. To have a nutritious diet, a family of four must spend at least $1,000 a month on groceries, according to the U.S. Department of Agriculture. And that's up about $675 from two years ago. Now, almost half of Americans have used Buy Now Pay Later apps. And of those, about one in five rely on them to buy groceries. And some 27% are using the loans as a bridge to their next paycheck. The Buy Now Pay Later model has allowed users to spread payments out evenly without occurring interest. And that's made it an attractive alternative to credit cards, especially when interest rates are hitting their highest level since 2007. But that convenience can turn into a catastrophe if users fall behind on payments and allow late fees to pile up. That can hurt your credit score, which is particularly dangerous to younger consumers and people of color who tend to have less wealth to begin with. Okay, so I don't think there's a whole lot of explaining here that I need to do on my part to illustrate the fact that people are having to resort to these buy now, pay later loans to pay for living expenses just to survive. And I saw many reports. This is just one little quick explanation video. The fact is that the use of buy NPL loans uh, has been exploding. And people would only use them if they had to, right? And this, and this is indicative of what's going on out there in the overall health of the economy and of people's ability to make a living, to make ends meet. And by the way, the economy is starting to affect every level of consumer out there, not just the poor people. The wealthy, believe it or not, are starting to hit the unemployment rolls. Let's take a look. This is out of zero hedge. Let's take a look at this chart. Okay. Now, this green line, this represents the initial jobless claims, and you can see how it has been, been going up very sharply here. Now, the red line represents continuing job loss claims. So these are people who have been on unemployment for a while, and they're staying on, on unemployment. But you can see they're all going up. So we're seeing initial unemployment going up, and we're seeing continuing unemployment going up. But more importantly, look at this. This chart shows a change in the number of households receiving unemployment benefits uh, through direct deposit. Okay, this is, these are unemployment benefits, right? And these have all been going up very sharply since last August. And you see the silver line? This represents the higher income earners. See, 125,000 plus. And it has been outpacing the other income demographics. Now, they've all been going up, but I, but I just wanted to illustrate that every social class is being hit here. And this has been going on since August. Why is this not being reported on in the mainstream media? Let's take a look at this chart. This is the after-tax wages and salaries growth by income group. And every income group is being hit. So you can see that uh, unemployment increase and wage decrease have been hitting every economic group. So these are the little clues that you want to be looking at to kind of determine the health of the economy. So... Reduce your exposure to your bank, put some of your money into gold and silver, and establish streams of passive recurring income. All right, so let's bring Rob in. All right, so... Uh, All right, once again, well done. Thank you, man. <laughs> Hey, hey, I want to I wanna pull on a thread first before we go to the loan part there. She said in that report that uh, consumers, <clears throat> excuse me, a family of four need to spend a thousand bucks a month on groceries, but then she kind of just brushed over the fact that that had gone up by six hundred and seventy-five bucks from a year ago. So hang, hang, oh, hang on, what? <laughs> yeah. Hang on. Last year it was three hundred and twenty-five bucks, and now it's six hundred and seventy-five bucks. That's like a that's like a three x increase. So you're telling me that groceries are now a thousand bucks a month for a household, but before a year ago they were three hundred and twenty-five bucks a month. What? That's what more... kind of inflation is that, man? That's yeah. not like 4%. 4% my ass. <laughs> exactly <laughs> right. That's more than a double. Uh, far more than a double. Uh, it's a triple. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, I know. I know. This 300%. Is, this is, yeah. But remember, our inflation numbers, they X out <laughs> food and housing. So that's the, look, that's the, you can't trust these government numbers. Yeah, you can't, you can't trust what they're giving to you. Well, what you can trust is those, those charts that you were showing there, right? So those charts are coming from the government and yeah. that's statistics. Mm -hmm. And those statistics showing that alarming increase of high income earners, 125,000 bucks a year more now on social security, now needing those buy now pay later loans for it to actually be meaningful. What do you think it is? What type of indicator is this is, 
this is a bit of a lagging indicator because we're seeing this information come through, but it's also a leading indicator showing us that consumers are really hurting because of inflation that's out there. And, but they're bridging the gap to cover off the inflation that's out there. So the measures that the government use in terms of raising interest rate to cause more pain to lower the spending and take the heat out of the economy is not really working because as that lady said in her report, people are using the buy now pay later loan to bridge the gap to the next paycheck, which stops the pain that the government are trying to inflict onto you. So what, what do you think is going to be the net result of that? Because we haven't seen that before because these things didn't exist in 2008. Yeah. Well, no, I, I, I would consider this a leading indicator because the consumer is it, it's, it's the most sensitive to their own personal financial situation, right? And and the government might not pick up on it until a little bit later. It might not you know, reflect in their overall zeitgeist until um, a little bit later. You know, uh, so, but the consumers, they're right there. They're more sensitive to the day-to-day -day changes in their lives. Um, and it takes a while for the powers to be to realize what's, what's going on. No, I'd consider it um, a, a leading indicator. Um, but listen, um, I call these, you know, you know little um, signposts. These are not little signposts. These are pretty big signposts. Uh, anybody, you know, if little old Ed Anderson in, in Wyzetta, Minnesota can see this stuff, <laughs> it, you know, you would think that some guy at the Fed in, a, you know, in some room down the hallway would see it too. Uh, and, and let their bosses, I mean, what? Uh, so you can't trust what these people are saying. They probably do see this, but they're not going to let let it out that they've seen it uh, or that they're doing because then they've, they've got to do something about, about it. And heaven forbid, they should do something about it. Uh, they, have, they have their own agenda. So they paint the picture that they want you to see. Does this, does this fall into the same category or the same bucket, if you like, as the consumer credit? So people are using credit cards to buy groceries, you know, or, albeit slightly, it's just a different form of credit, right? Buy now, pay later. Um, and credit card is you're buying now and you're paying straight away in the form of interest. So we've seen explosive growth. I'm certain if you pull out those graphs, I've, I've been watching a bunch of finance channels showing us that that's off the chart as well. And part of the reason it's off the chart is because of inflation. And, and again, it come back to what that lady said. She described it so eloquently when she said, people are using credit to bridge the gap from today's lack of money in their bank account to next week's paycheck and and they're okay they can manage that but that can only go on for so long because eventually the gap in credit becomes larger and larger and your credit needs to become more and more to cover that gap between today and the next paycheck because inflation is going up and additional costs are being put into you so then the government pain starts to actually come home to roost for you, which is what the government want, you know. The government mm -hmm. have mismanaged the economy so bad that they have to inflict pain on everyday consumers in order for them to actually fix the mistakes that they've made. It's unbelievable, really. Yeah, you know, when you consider, uh, remember, with, with the banking crisis that's going on right now, we've been telling you guys for a while now, uh, the banks are going to start reducing credit lines, okay, because, uh, you know, they can't, they can't, they can't afford it. You're going to see all these banks reducing your credit card limits, reducing how much you can get for your mortgage, reducing your building loan. There's going to be, the credit crunch has already started in the banks. Right? So that includes the, the, the credit cards. So let's say you have a credit card that, that you, you want to max out, which is not a good idea, but, you, but, you're, <laughs> but you're desperate, you have to. Well, they're going to be cutting, if they haven't already, they're going to be cutting your credit limits on your credit cards. And uh, so we're, we're in a really dicey area here, Rob. You know, like you said, they people can only pull so many rabbits out of the hat. Um, you know, and, and people would not be resorting to these kind of loans unless they had to, right? Uh, so, so you know, so that this indicates to me that more and more people are at the end of the ropes, and and they're they're looking for whatever little life vest they can find to get them through the week, to get the, to, pay, to feed their kids for that week. And the, so when the people are resorting to these kind of products more and more, it's a huge red plague. Um, now, maybe a lot of people are saying, well, I'm going to max out my credit card while I can, while I still have a, a, a credit limit. And I will hope that the government will bail me out in one form or, or another down the road. <laughs> you know, which, which is not moral, right? You know, you're taking out loan. When you take out a loan, even if it's on a credit card, 
you know, you're responsible for that, man. Hey, you made an agreement. Yeah, I'll, I'll pay you back. But what I'm, I hate to say it, but what a lot of people do is is they, they take out large loans. They, they extend themselves assuming that the government will come up with some kind of a savior down the road or they'll file for bankruptcy or they'll they'll find a way out of it later on. Right now, they're just trying to pay the bills. Right now, they're just trying to feed the family. And that can only go on for a certain period of time. And uh, when you have to pay the piper, it, it can be a, 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 a very nasty. I, I still think that when that final straw goes on the camel's back and, and, and things fall out a bit, you can wake up one day and 2008 is going to look like the good old days. Um. <laughs> you know, there's there's just there's just really a couple of solutions to it. It's becoming the mantra on this channel. And it's just about reducing your exposure to the bank. So only have what you need to have in the bank, maybe three months worth of bills. Get yourself some gold and silver, take your money out and put it into an asset where the actual value of it's locked in. Gold and silver, property, whatever you choose, gold and silver is like the time tested thing. It's very simple. And then you've got possession of it as well. That way it can't be taken away from you. And then the solution in my mind, the solution in my mind, the, my whole entrepreneurial life when I left the military in 2002, if there was problems, if I couldn't afford something, my solution was always to make more money. But it's not until you realize that you can't continuously swap your time for money to solve those problems. And that's, you know, it's a bit of a throwaway line, you know, stop complaining about how expensive things are and just work more. Well, I can only work so many hours per week. I can really only fit in 50 or 60 hours a week at a maximum, you know, working 12 hours a day because I'm trying to live a life and not kill myself and die in the process. But if you can figure out a way to get some leverage and leverage the cash flow that you've got and create more cash flow with that, that will help you to bridge the gap. You won't need a buy now, pay later loan. You won't need a credit card because you've got cash flow coming from multiple streams of income. And that is just like a, a dead simple way of solving this financial crisis. Even if you had an extra $200 per week and it paid for some groceries and it paid for some petrol for your car, that would make a huge difference in most people's lives where you don't have to think about that. Or well, that spare 200 bucks can then maybe be spent on entertainment. You're going out, having dinner with your missus or you're going seeing friends, or if you were smart about it, you'd pay down some debt with that extra 200 bucks and live within your means. The point is, if you had an extra 200 bucks a week, it doesn't take much to make a difference in people's lives, particularly if you're struggling. If you're on the breadline and, and you're having a hard time and you need to use Afterpay or ZipPay or some form of buy now, pay later to actually bridge the gap between here and there, then maybe creating some passive recurring income streams is the way to go. And that can be done really easily. There's so many programs out there that you can join. There's so many things that you can join. And here at The Unspoken Truth, we're gonna show you some really simple ways of getting that done in the next couple of days. In fact, I'm gonna launch that this week, so I'm excited to be bringing that to life. Did you wanna add anything to that, Ed? Because that's always been your mantra. That's been the mantra your whole life is to create that passive income, right? Yeah, well, listen, a, a couple of years ago, it was nice to have uh, a side hustles or some sort of and a little extra money coming in through, through passive income. It's, it's always nice to have a little extra money. These days, it's not a luxury anymore. Yeah, you have to do it. The only way you're going to be able to keep up or, or, or get ahead of inflation is with a passive income stream. You know, and uh, It's even more important for people who do have nine to five jobs because you're constrained. There's only a finite number of dollars you're going to bring in every month, even with your, you know, if you put in extra hours, you know, you're, you're locked in. So for people who have actual nine to five jobs, it's even more important for you to de develop, you know, passive income streams. You know, uh, if you, if you're, if you're going to spend your life, you know, trading your time for money, you know, uh, you're, you're,